Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. For my video today, I'm going to be showing you guys how I set up my hamster bin cage. Now, I know the cage behind me is not a bin cage, just ignore that, that's one of my other cages. The cage in this video though is going to be my 110 quart bin cage. Now, really when you're setting up a bin cage, you're really setting it up the same you would as any other cage. Um, you pretty well need all the same supplies and everything, so it's not a whole lot different, but I do get requests quite often to actually just show how I set up my bin cages, so I thought I would do that because you guys requested, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Before we get into the video, I want to give a quick little like supply list of the things you'll need because I did not actually do that when I was filming the cage setup, so let's talk about what you're going to need to set up your hamster's bin cage. First thing that's probably kind of obvious that you're going to need is the bin itself, you know the bin cage. So when picking out a bin to make your cage out of, make sure you are getting one that is big enough. Currently the recommended minimum cage for a hamster is a cage that meets the requirement of 450 square inches. So to find out your square inches, you just multiply length times width and that will give you your square inches. So whatever bin you're getting, just find out how long it is, find out how wide it is, multiply those two together and see if it meets the minimum of 450. If it does not meet the minimum of 450, I would recommend going for a bigger cage so that your hamster has a suitable amount of room. Once you have your bin picked out, you're going to need all the supplies to go in it. One of the first things you will probably add is bedding, so make sure you have some sort of hamster safe bedding. The options include things like aspen shavings, you don't want pine or cedar, those aren't really good for hamsters or any paper bedding that is non-scented. You do not want scented bedding. That is quite bad for hamsters respiratory systems. So make sure you are using a safe bedding. There's lots of options out there. Some of my personal favorites would be Aspen Shavings, KT Clean and Cozy, Carefresh. There's an all living things brand bedding that's kind of similar to Clean and Cozy. Anyways, there's lots of options out there. Next, you will want a wheel. Different hamsters require different size wheels, so make sure you are getting the size appropriate for your hamster. Syrian hamsters will typically need 10 inch wheels or larger, typically 10 to 12 is recommended, and a dwarf hamster will need a 6.5 inch or larger. This video you're watching today, I'm setting up the bin cage for my dwarf hamster, so I am only using, I believe it is an eight and a half inch wheel, but keep in mind that if you are setting this up for a Syrian, you will want something bigger. Next, you will need some sort of hide houses, things for the hamster to hide in. It's important that you have things for them to hide in so that they can feel secure, they have somewhere nice to go and hide, they have somewhere to sleep and make their nest and everything like that. So make sure you have something on hand for them to hide in. You will also want some kind of toys, something that they can kind of just explore, play with, something to, you know, exercise their mind. It's important that they have toys so that they can keep themselves entertained. You will also want to provide specific chew toys so that your hamster can chew on them and keep their teeth nice and worn down. Hamsters teeth are constantly growing so it's important that they have things to grind their teeth down on. Once you have all of this you will also want a food dish of some sort. I guess this is kind of optional because some people do choose to scatter feed. This is a totally good option. It provides additional enrichment for your hamster. So scatter feeding is an option so you really don't need a food bowl if that is what you're going for. But if you're not planning on scatter feeding then you should get a food bowl and no matter what you need some sort of water bottle for your hamster to drink out of. Something that could be optional is a sand bath. Some hamsters love using sand baths. Some of them don't use them at all. I have found that dwarf hamsters tend to use them much more than Syrians. My Syrian hamsters do not use sand baths at all, so I don't bother giving them to them anymore because they just absolutely do not use them. But my dwarf, on the other hand, uses sand baths quite often, so, you know, you can add a sand bath in there as well. So now with all that said, let's go ahead and just get into the video and see how I set up my bin cage. So obviously the first thing you're going to need when setting up a bin cage is the cage itself. So this isn't a tutorial on how to make a bin cage. The cage that I'm using is already made. I already have the lid and everything for it. So once again, this is just not a tutorial on how to make a bin cage. This is just going to be how to set it up for your hamster. 
So the first thing you're probably going to want to do after you have your bin is add the bedding. So here I have the All Living Things paper bedding. It is non-scented, so it is safe for hamsters. So just make sure whatever bedding you're using is safe. You don't want any scented bedding and you don't want to use anything like pine or cedar shavings. So stick with things such as aspen shavings or things like non-scented paper bedding. So when you're adding in your bedding, keep in mind that hamsters are burrowing animals, so they should have a few inches of bedding to burrow in. So because of that, you're probably going to want to add quite a bit. I'm actually probably going to use this whole bag here just to give my hamster a lot of room to burrow and dig if he wants to. Now the bin is nice and full with bedding. It has a couple inches worth in it. So I'm going to go ahead and add in the wheel. I am actually setting this up for my Campbell's Dwarf Hamster. So I'm going to be using an eight and a half inch comfort wheel. If you are setting the cage up for a dwarf, make sure you're using at least a six and a half inch wheel. And if you're setting it up for a Syrian, I would recommend using at least a 10 inch wheel. I'm also going to take this, I believe it's a seven inch flying saucer and add this in the cage as well. You don't need to have both. As long as you have one wheel, that's fine. But I just, I do have both of them. So I thought I might as well go ahead and add them both and then he can choose which one he wants to use. Next thing I'm going to do is add some things such as hide houses. These are important to add into a hamster's cage to help them feel secure. Obviously they need some places to hide. A lot of the times they will make their nests in these places. So it's really important that you offer some of these or else you'll probably end up with a stressed out hamster if they have nowhere to hide. Now, this one here is actually what I use as a sand bath. This isn't like a hide, I'll actually put some sand in there. And then my hamster uses it as a sand bath, but I'm going to be doing that later. These bendy bridges are something I really like. I think they're really useful because they can act sort of as a hide, like the hamster can go under there and hide there. They can also use it as just like a climbing toy and like climb over it. And they can use it as a chew toy because it's all wood. So it's perfectly safe for them to chew on. So I, I personally really like bendy bridges like this. So I would recommend having some of these if you own hamsters. So now my hamster does have multiple hiding spots. He can hide in this little house here, he can hide under the bridge, and he can hide in this little house here. So like I said before, it's definitely important to have multiple hiding spots for your hamster so that they feel nice and safe and they can build their nest where they like. Next up, I'm going to add this little cardboard tube here. I guess this could also kind of be considered as a hiding spot because he could technically go in there and hide, but I kind of use it just more as a toy. He can run through it and, you know, do whatever he wants, but yeah, so I'm just gonna go and add that. Once you have all of your hidey places in the cage, the next important thing I feel like you should add in would be some chew toys. So here I have a couple chew toys. I am going to put a few more than this in, but I'm just going to kind of scatter these throughout the cage. And chew toys are really important to have for hamsters because it helps them keep their teeth worn down and it also just kind of helps to give them some things to do, you know, it's good enrichment for them to go and chew on their chew toys, you know. So definitely want to have at least a few different chew toys for them to play with. And now I'm going to add my hamster's food dish in. Obviously there's no food in this right now, I will be adding that 
after but I'm just going to go and stick the bowl right there now you don't actually need a food bowl if you do plan on scatter feeding although I just personally do choose to use a food dish but it's perfectly fine if you don't want to use a food bowl if you want to scatter feed instead so it's not necessary that you have a food bowl but it's just what I prefer to do and lastly, I will be adding my hamster's water bottle. So I'm just going to hang this over the side right there and then make sure he has room to drink out of it. It's not too close to the ground. It's not too high up. It's a nice, good height for him. So overall, setting up a bin cage for a hamster is really no different than setting up any other cages. You really just need all of the same stuff. You need your bedding, you need your wheel, you need your hide houses, chew toys, food, water, all that stuff. Um, there's really no difference from setting up a bin cage to a regular cage, but I thought I would just show you guys how I set up my bin cage anyways. Keep in mind, this is for a dwarf hamster. If you are using it for a Syrian, make sure you're using appropriate sized items, such as a wheel. You will want a bigger wheel. This is perfect for a dwarf. It's eight and a half inches, totally fine for him, but it would probably be a little bit tiny for a Syrian. I typically recommend going with at least a 10 inch wheel for Syrians. And now, as I said before, I do have a sand bath here and a food bowl here, but they're currently empty. Um, currently in my living room right now, my cage doesn't belong in the living room, so I'm not going to fill them up here. I'm going to take the cage back to the small pet room and then I'll fill them up there. But you can just imagine, sand goes in here and food goes in there. So now once your cage is all done, you are ready to add your hamster. So I'm just going to go and let him walk off my hand and, and he can go and explore. And he can now go and explore his nice new cage. guys well that was it for the video today i hope you enjoyed it if you did be sure to give this video a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you get notified whenever i post also be sure to check out all of my social media everything is just msam99 i will be in the description below but um you should check that out i love it if you guys have followed me on there i'd appreciate it lots so make sure you go and do all that once again thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you all in my next video